Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Karen Carlson. Pam McKelvey and Jerry Tate have the evening off. President Clinton is calling Memphis home tonight as he brings his latest effort to bolster the nation's economy right here to the Mid-South. News Channel 3's Elliot Cohen was at Memphis International as Air Force One touched down and joins us now live to explain what the plans include. Elliot? Good evening, Karen. Live at the news desk, Elliot Cohen, News Channel 3. Thank you very much, Elliot. We have a new story developing right now at this moment out on Brooks and Kazaza. The overnight transportation company workers are striking. We are told they are concerned with company wages and benefits and that the strike does affect at least 300 people right here in the Mid-South. We do have News Channel 3 crews on the way and we'll update you as details become available. We do have an update for you on the strike going on right now with the overnight transportation trucking company. We have a live shot to show you of the protest going on right now. Again, this is a developing story. You can see several people out there on Brooks Road. Workers are striking for concerns of union wages and benefits. Company officials right now are not commenting, but we are told that there will be a meeting tomorrow between the two sides. And we are told it will affect about 400 to 450 people. The strike affects city drivers, over the road drivers, dock hands, and shop mechanics. Again, around 400 to 450 people. Again, this is a developing story. We are just getting information on this. Teamsters Local 667 on strike. We will have the latest for you tomorrow morning on News Channel 3 Daybreak. It's a story out of Tipton County that has parents there concerned about an accused video voyeur. News Channel 3's Karen Carlson has the story that you'll see only on 3. Atoka, a place families escape to to avoid the dangers of the big city. A quiet community tucked away in Tipton County. But three families say a scandal is unfolding at this home in Atoka, that this was the scene of a crime, and that this man committed that crime against their daughters. Police claim 39-year-old Terry Lee Kusan, a husband and father, did the unthinkable, that he hid a home video camera in his bathroom and secretly recorded at least three young girls taking showers in his house. Neighbors say the victims were friends of Kusan's teenage daughter. Kusan didn't answer the door for us, but neighbors say they couldn't believe this man. It just surprised us all. Who constantly invited them to church. We've got a little girl. She could possibly be responsible for such a thing. Shocking if you ask me. Rhonda Oliver moved to this subdivision to get away from a similar situation elsewhere. I think the parents should have been notified. And when she heard the allegations, she was outraged. We heard bits and pieces and didn't know it for a month. And we had, I mean, more little girls playing and little boys. The whole neighborhood seemed to be getting arrested. Peggy Duckhorn lives right next door. It was just a shock to all of us. Her children were good friends with the Kusan's children. You just don't know what he was up to. Both she and Rhonda say it has turned the neighborhood upside down. I wouldn't let my kids play there anymore until he's proven innocent or guilty. Mm -hmm. And it was just to hear say we weren't for sure. And then when you've seen him getting arrested, everything's like pointing towards what we were hearing. And on this summer day, when people are tending to their gardens, there are no children out playing on their bikes, no playful laughter of a kid's day free of worry, and no neighbor who's not wondering what really happened beyond those doors in Atoka. Not only is the community outraged by the allegations, but they're equally upset about the charges. All three are misdemeanors, which could mean a conviction could bring just a few months probation. I'm Karen Carlson, News Channel 3. Roll it from the 401k plan to... Back up 214 uh, points. You know, because you get the maximum flexibility. Another day, another Dow. And more time to raise a questioning eyebrow about our economy. Look at, uh, look at the old computer. Came off Those questions are keeping things busy for Doug Atkinson of Morgan Keegan. But although the market has lost virtually all of its gains this year, he says now is not the time to panic. To me, it makes uh, great sense to go in and buy it at, at half price. It's like if you went to to buy a pair of shoes and they're on sale for half price, I'd, I'd much rather pay half price than full price. But that advice isn't drawing the same conclusions for Gary Turner of Memphis. He's more than doubled his money in the stock market this year, but after yesterday, he's gun shy. I just feel like, you know, the thing to do is wait and see what happens with the market and wait until that there's a definite upturn in the market to get back in. 
Now, there is some concern on Wall Street now about a bear market, but whether to buy or sell didn't affect most people, especially here at the bull market in Horn Lake, where most people just wanted to know what all the fuss was about. Long as we get this right here, you go on, okay? That's what Katrina White wants to know. She's been working at the bull market for nine months today, and to her, that's all that matters. It's just business. That's all I can see it is, you know, and I don't be interested in stuff like that. Right. As long as it don't affect my job, that's all I want. And most people I talk to couldn't agree more. I don't have any stocks that much, so it doesn't really bother me. No, I don't guess I do really care as long as it just don't hurt us. That's all. But don't tell that to William Branch of Whitehaven. He says his son's future depends on the market, and that's what matters to him. I want him to go to college, you know, to try to better himself, do better than what I'm doing. And uh, I think uh, that stock market has a, a provide important part to play in that. It's nasty out there. It is very bad out here, Joe and Mary Beth. You're talking about all those different weather conditions, and they're all out here. Let me tell you, we've been out here for about an hour. When we first got out here, there was no precipitation whatsoever. And as you can see, the weather conditions are getting worse. Traffic is as well. You can see volumes picking up a little more here. I'm stepping out of the way here so you can see some of the cars coming off of Bill Morris Parkway onto 240. Traffic moving along very, very slowly. And let me tell you, the roads here were frozen to begin with. I want to show you a little something else. I'm going to show you what the weather conditions are right down here. You can take a look down here by my foot. You can see the ice and exactly how icy it is down here. Certainly very, very cold. We are told by the Arkansas Highway Patrol that they aren't even reporting accidents anymore because there are so many out there. Certainly a lot out here. And you know what? We've seen a lot of cars moving along very slowly, doing very well. But a lot of 4x4s and some of those other vehicles speeding right along as though there were no traffic problems whatsoever. So, Joe and Mary Beth, it looks like those are the type of people we have to be careful for. So not only do you have to watch out for yourselves, but certainly the other drivers as well. <laughs> Reporting live in East Memphis, I'm Karen Carlson. Now back to you guys. Yes, I think some of those folks in four-wheel drive are under the impression they have four-wheel braking as well in this stuff, and it doesn't work that way. No, it doesn't. In fact, some recommendations are that you should drive as though you don't have any brakes at all, because really, in weather like this, you really don't. Mm -hmm. Good point. Well, finally tonight, you know, downtown Tokyo is known for a lot of things. Monkey sightings, not one of them. But rules or not, a wild monkey has appeared on the streets of one of the most metropolitan and cosmopolitan cities in the world. It was first spotted in mid-June when police received numerous sightings. Now, at one point, we're told the monkey was actually hit while trying to cross the street, but made it out alive and made it to safety. Now, it's managed to elude officers for the past several weeks. The local police department thinks it's a wild monkey who made its way out of a forest west of the city. He's Wily just little mad. creature He's one way or the other. He's just mad now that he got hit. He's just <laughs> angry. <laughs> he reminds me of a monkey from Outbreak. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. We'll see you again tomorrow.